So where do you think the cutoff for the term ECW original would be? Now, I was reading some of the comments. One of the fans said he thinks at ECW, if you were in e- significant impact on ECW prior to 96, you're an original. But where would you kind of cut off the ECW original moniker? Or would you? Would you keep everybody in there? You know, to be honestly, uh, it would be nice to keep everyone in there and keep everyone as ECW originals, but 97 is the cutoff for me. You were there after 97. I, I don't know. It's, it's, I can't consider you an original original. I really consider 97 like the cutoff point as far as being an original. I know like Chris Chetty could say, you know, he's an original. Rhino. Techni- technically was trained before there, whatever. Yeah, Rhino. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Oh, PJ, he was the world based, champion. PJ yeah, almost incredible. falls into that. Well, he was there in '97, late '97. Late '97. Um, yeah. Okay. But yeah, so I mean, I I count that uh, basically. So you're saying '97, so '98 forward. I kind of. But then you got to throw in. I don't know. Rhino was a champion, and Carino was a champion, and Jerry Lynn was a champion. And how could you not consider them original? So it's kind of like, kind of touch and go. It's almost like all those guys should be ECW originals. Shane, what do you think? Well, I've always seen it as like almost like different classes, right? You know, so like the the, the original class that came in in '93 and then the '94, uh, th- those are the guys that I consider the originals. You know, your Terry Funks, your Sabu's, Sandman. Sandman says something the other day on that podcast uh, on the the, uh, the the internet the uh, cable show that we were on the other day that I I hadn't realized until he said it. And I thought about it. And I thought he's right. He was the longest tenured person in ecw uh he was there before joel goodhart sold it to todd gordon and you know preceded you know me funk uh taz tommy dreamer raven all of us uh but that original group and and, you know the reason i consider that the original when i say the, the the phrase original was we were the ones that built the company from scratch uh you know there was a I don't want to say a painful period, but there was a a rough period that ECW had to go through where, you know, you could see Paul being again, in this one instance, way ahead of the, uh, of the curve where you had Jimmy Snook and Don Morocco and, uh, uh, you know, so many of those greats from the previous generation. And Paul knew that he couldn't really build on that. These guys were seeing the sunset on their careers and Paul had a much longer vision of ecw uh you know so going back to 93 early 94 and saying okay we're gonna fire a uh a don morocco or a uh jimmy snooka or a road warrior animal a hawk uh you know or whoever from that generation and then bring in these guys that 99% 99% of America had never seen before a Sabu or, you know, the Ray Mysterios and super crazies and, uh, you know, guys like that, you know, on paper, that looked like a really numbskull move and God, it turned out to be like the magic dust in ECW, you know? So I, I consider those, those of us that were there originally to be the originals because, you know, we saw it go from a company that, you know, for the first couple of shows had a hundred and 150, 175 people at, we would stand out on the front sidewalk and hand out coupons for free beer and hot dogs that night. And it was several months in three, two, three, four months, like in that range where suddenly the ECW arena show every three weeks was starting to sell out and then sell out in advance. And then we were getting tons of requests for people saying, Hey, I want, I want to buy tickets, but I want the same seats I had before, you know, sort of like box seats, and that's when you, you could sense that the company was starting to get some traction. Uh, there was an awful lot of work to do there. And keep in mind, you know, again, how I, I always say you have to look at it through contemporary eyes. Impossible to look back today and make a fair assessment. But in that time frame, in, in 93 going into 94, you know, like, like Terry Funk said the first day we got picked up at the uh, Philadelphia airport. He said, well, Shano, how long do you think we'll drive it, ride this train before it runs off the tracks? The consensus being that it would be, uh, you know, two or three shows and this new company would be done. Uh, so, you know, not that we were hoping for that or even expecting it, but it seemed to be a, more a possibility than it becoming lightning in a bottle and one of the hottest promotions the wrestling industry has ever seen in America. Uh, 
you know, so in that time frame and in that context, like I was doing my promos to go out and start slamming the big two companies and their champions and challenging them to shoots and, you know, putting this little fledgling company over, over top of those, you know, those gigantic companies, you know, that could have really quickly led to a uh, blackballing in the business uh, and, you know, an end of career type move uh, and a career ending type move, I want to say. Uh, instead, it worked. You know, we all believed in the, the revolution. Uh, we all knew that if we got into it the same way and worked hard with the fans that we were seeing coming, we knew that that would ha- at least have a chance for success. Well, you know, the night I threw down the NWA belt, there was no guarantee that that was going to work. I, and f- again, from contemporary eyes, had every chance and likelihood of becoming a really big turd in, in the proverbial punch bowl. Uh, and, and yet it didn't. So when I say originals, I, I mean, those of us that were there on day one, day two, day three, and, you know, really worked to build it. Uh, that, that was the hard part. We also had it easy because to come into that second, third generation, uh, or class and try to get over with that crowd, boy, that, you know, that was a tough thing to do. Uh, they were so bought into us that were there originally and, you know, one thing about ECW fans, they're always brutally honest. So for those second and third classes that came in, they'd go out and, you know, fuck up a spot. That crowd would let you know that the you fucked up chant pretty much started in the ECW arena. And so, you know, <laughs> the, uh, the originals, we didn't have to face as much of that, thank God, as the other generations that came in behind us. Remember the first time hearing, you know, fuck them up, Sam, man, fuck them up and being like, <laughs> yeah. you can say that on the in yeah. the crowd. I never knew that. But, yeah, I think there's uh, I, I think really when you hit through the title and it hit the mat, I think that's where the original moniker kind of picks up, because we've said it before on the show. You know, nobody counts Mr. Hughes as an ECW. Yeah. original. Nobody counts uh, Matt Bourne as an ECW original or Sensational Sherry. So I think once that title bounces off the mat, I think people start the originals clock. And like John said, you know, you kind of get to that 98 era, you know, uh, people are starting to leave, you know, Raven leaves, Sam leaves, you leave, and people are kind of left looking like, oh, well, I don't know if I can get into so-and-so or so-and-so. But yeah. then, you know, missing out on those classics with Jerry Lynn and Rob Van Dam and, you know, these emerging stars and guys that maybe only got one shot and it was during that era of ECW. So right. that, that original moniker, I feel like it's got that 94 – so like John said, like the nine on the fringe of ninety eight because in ninety eight everybody was watching. So I mean, like it's 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 hard to not call them original in ninety eight. Uh, I, I guess you know again from having been there, it seems to me that you know it, you identify it in your head as hey these, these these are the men and women that were here originally. Then these other ones came in after. Not they were lesser or not as good. They they brought in some incredible talent with them. Uh, you know, I remember the night that, uh, Lance Storm debuted, you know, I love Lance to death. Uh, he's an incredible in-ring, uh, talent, a, a true technician, but because of his, his personality on screen, you know, it's by ECW stand is a little on the bland side. Uh, but he went out there and put on a clinic and, you know, to get over that audience, at that time was a really difficult thing to do. And he went out and with that one showing went out there and, and, you know, blew the lid off the place and really earned the fans respect. And, uh, you know, I would argue that the the Lance storm, we all came to know and love and respect started there on that night, you know, because uh, prior to that, not many people had heard of or seen Lance storm. And he came in what I would consider to be the, the most daunting audience in wrestling uh in america at that time and wowed them on night one incredible job 